Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf of Metziah Daf Mem Ches. We are holding on Mem Zayin Mem Beis, four lines off the bottom of the Amad, that last word over there on the fourth line, Tanan. Let's go back to the Mishnah. Aval Omru, although we say that mere payment for an item does not constitute full, uh, uh, you know, acquisition, a deal is not over until you actually take physical possession, until you do Mashiach on that item. Aval, but the Chachamim tell us, Hashem who paid back the uh, people of the Mabal, he punished them. Who also leave para, he's going to punish. A fellow who does not stand by his word and reneges on his commitments. So although technically, deal is not over until you do Mashiach, but you're meant to stick with your promise and keep the deal. Now, you may recall, we had a machlekes in yesterday's daf. Rabbi Yechanan says, Minatera, mere payment, constitutes a full deal. Meshicha was just an added uh, requirement by the Chachamim to protect the buyer's interests, etc. Rish Lakers says, No, Minatera, Meshicha is a requirement to close the deal. So, it's all good and well. If mere payment Handling the money makes the kinyan, minatayra. Mishamachi koi bavo. That explains why when a fellow backs away from a deal after having paid for it, he is deserving of this, you know, uh, this uh, verdict, this aval verdict, right? That he's going to suffer from it. Because, look, you know, you already paid for it. Minatayra, it, it's, it's done. Why are you going back on your deal? So you get that punishment. Heli Amr's Moyes ain't on kindness. But according to Rish Lakish, handling the money does not make a Kenyan at all. I might call you Ba'aval. So why is this fellow guilty? Mishum Tvarim, just because he verbally committed to sell the item? I mean, he's just, it's just words. Just because he verbally committed, he's deserving of this aval punishment. But Tanya, Bryce says otherwise. So if you pay a dinar zov for a talis, by making a kinin on the talis, the mashikh on the chayfetz is what concludes the transaction. But merely by handing the money by payment alone, that doesn't make a kinyan on the talus. So that's the true fact. Until you make Mashiach on the item, you haven't really completed the deal. So although the fellow who reneges on the deal at that point is going to be deserving of that Misha Para, right? But that's the Allah. Meaning, we, you know, the Bezdin cannot get in the way. If he decides to cancel the deal, it's up to him. But still, we all know that Misha Para Mi'anshadar HaMavu Mi'anshadar HaFlogu The same Hashem who responded to those Rishayim who didn't keep their word Who also the Para is going to punish a fellow who does not stand by his word Now, let's say a person simply negotiated and he verbally committed to buying something. That's not a Kenyan. But if he backs out at that point, you know, after having verbally committed to you know, purchasing something or selling, the Chachamim are not pleased with his actions. But that's it. That's how far it goes. It doesn't go further than that. It's not more serious than that. It's not an upstanding thing to do. But on the we... We can only say this thing. Right? That's it. But he's not deserving of this terrible Misha Para verdict. So why do we say that um, when a person conducted a transaction, handed money, he, he is deserving? I mean, if money doesn't really make a Kenyan, so it's, it's a mere verbal agreement. Answers the Gemara, well, it depends. If it's just verbal, you're right. 
Here it's different. It's verbal and there was a handing over of money. And Rashi says, these are dvarim which actually, you know, manifested it in an act, in handing over of money. So that's really going a bit too far. That denotes real commitment and, you know, the people are really expecting it to go through. It's not fair to back out at that point. Dvarim, but mere words, without the accompanying payment, that's not so terrible. Like, hey, Bible, it's still preliminary and therefore, when you back out, you don't get the Mishapara. Now, Tesis asks, the Gemara is asking from a Brisa where we see Dvarim is not considered, but in the first part of the Brisa, we have Rabbi Shimon who says, that um, when you pay for the uh, the talus with the dinar zav, you you get the bishapara. So basically, we're asking a kasha, but within the price itself, we see that by mere pay, pay you know mere payment is enough to is sufficient to generate the bishapara. So why are we asking from this price uh, on Rishlakish? Uh, why do we, you know, uh, why does Mishnah say you get Mishapara for paying? Paying is not, is not really doing anything according to Rish Lakish. Well, the price, this price that we're bringing from indicates that it is. Stasis says, yeah, this price is Rav Shimon speaking. Rav Shimon, even Rish Lakish agreed yesterday, according to Rav Shimon, Mois is Kaine. So that explains why in the beginning of the price, um, Rav Shimon, right, it's Rav Shimon speaking. The handing over the money triggers the Mishapara. That's a given. But the main point was from the next part of the price where it says that just merely dvarim alone don't do much. And that triggered our question, so why in our mission does it indicate that it does? And the answer was, well, even if you hold Mois is not kind of, but the fact is it's more of a commitment, it's an expression of, you know, of commitment, of finality, and therefore that deserves Misha Parah. I have a Pasuk and a Bryce in support of Rishlakish's opinion that Mois alone don't constitute a Kenyan, even in Minatira. You need Meshicha to make a transaction. Where is the Pasuk? Kro. We have a Pasuk in Vayikra, Perik. Hey, Pasuk of Aleph. Giving us a full list of all kinds of robberies, all kinds of dishonesties. So he denied, V'kichesh Bamite denied having a Pikadon, right? V'kichesh Bamite be Pikadon, oh, you never gave me anything to watch. Oy Bissum Esiyad. He denied having borrowed money from his friend. Oy Bissum having stolen from him. Oy Ashok Esamite, or owing him, you know, wages. And the Gemara explains that um, you know, the Pasuk afterwards, on Pasuk Chav Gimel, Chav Dalet, uh, speaks about uh, this fellow who now turned around and repented. He says, oh, I'm sorry, I, I made a sh- I swore that I, uh, you know, to deny that claim, but you know what, actually, I do, I do owe it to you, and the Allah is, he has to bring a carbon asham, he has to add a fifth, it's a whole deal. Now, the only reason why, when a, a fellow denies a loan, he would be c- included in this, in this process, because the truth is that a loan... Rashi says he would not be chayiv a carbon shavua for denying a, a loan. Because, in Rashi's words, money is meant to be spent. So when I deny having taken a loan, I'm not really denying an actual, you know, something tangible. It's more of an abstract type of, you know, obligation. So this whole carbon shavua would not apply. It only applies to a fellow who denies having an actual item in his possession, like a pikadan, like a, an aveda, right? So why is it so? Why do we consider it to be like a tangible uh, denial? And the more explains, to Sumasiyad, this is the loan. Amrav Chizak going to yichad loy kli lavasay. What happened was that Shimon, upon borrowing the money from Reuven, actually designated a certain item. You know, this is going to be committed to the loan. It's like a, a collateral, right? So now, when he denies, he's denying an actual, a tangible, you know, item, so to speak. Because he's refusing to acknowledge that this item is sort of committed to the uh, lender. So that's why it falls into this category and it belongs on this list of other actual monetary denials. Same thing with the, with the Oishek, when he denies uh, his employee, you know, wages. Ashak, again, it's an abstract type of thing. So how does that uh, work? Again, he designated a certain item. Uh, he says, Mr. Employee, Mr. Work, I owe you money. Okay, this is going to be designated for that, um, you know, uh, obligation. So by denying, 
he's actually denying it a tangible type of claim. But that's all in Pasuk of Aleph, where we have a, a full list of uh, possible monetary denials. We have Pikadon, we have the Tzusu Mesiyad, we have the Gazal, we have Asher Gesamitoy. But interestingly, if you take a look at the next Pasuk, Pasuk of Tupsakam uh, Dam, Pasuk of Gimel, where he's actually turning around and admitting and wanting to do tshuva, and the Torah gives him the opportunity to repay. There we have something's missing. We have a partial listing. and Torah allows him to give it back. Describing upon describing the second phase of the of the uh, procedure, we have a missing list. Right? He'll return the stolen item. Okay, it's absolute. Asher Gazal. Ashak, or the wages which he withheld. Asher Havkad Itay, or the item which was given to him for deposit. But we're missing something. Why doesn't the Pasi include the, um, the loan? My time and why? Lav Mishum the Machasha Mashicha. Oh, apparently what happened was, yeah, he designated the item on account of the loan, but the lender never did Mashicha. He never physically took possession of that item. So apparently until the Mashiach happens, he doesn't really become an owner. And therefore, it doesn't really constitute full denial on account of the borrower because it never really belonged to the lender. That's a right to Rish Lakish that Mashiach is what constitutes ownership. Amalira Papalarava, hold it. Ema Ma'ishik Hudahadar Kra. Maybe we can learn like this. The reason why the Pasuk didn't bother mentioning to some Mesiyad is because the, the Pasuk already, Hadra Kar already um, mentioned in, in this Pasuk of, of, of reciprocation, the, Gemara, the Pasuk already mentioned Oishik, which was a very similar, he withheld wages and, and was speaking that he already designated a Kli. It was a very similar type of context. And once we mentioned that, right, that it qualifies for this Parsha, so likewise to some Mesiyad. The item which was meant to be applied to his loan, that too is included in this process. I mean, otherwise it's just a repetition. The Pasuk mentioned one example of this type of, you know, variation, and there's no need to go into the other variation. So it's not really an omission. But we're speaking, King Oishin not le mimenu. What happened was that the employee was not Lame Menu. He, he actually physically took possession, he took the item that the employer offered him to apply to the um, wages, and then he gave it back to him for the timing, because right, with he gave it back to the employer. So there was Mashiach. You're working with the promise, there's no Mashiach. No Mashiach, no ownership. No, there was Mashiach. Well, if that's the case, Heine Pekadin, then it's exactly like a Pekadin. Basically, it's a person depositing his personal item with this, uh, with this denier. And the Pasuk already mentions Pekotin. Why would we have to go through the same story again and again? Trey got any Pekotin? Two variations of Pekotin. One where it actually belonged to him and he gave it to his friend. One where his friend offered to him this item an account of payment and he took it for a minute and gave it back. A different variation. So if that's the case, that Meshichah was executed and ownership was established. So, why does the Torah, in fact, leave out to some Yad? It can work along these lines. Lehadri, the Pasuk should mention it in the list of, of you know, uh, of um, rectifications. Velokme, and we'll learn that it's speaking in this type of context. The lender received physical possession of this item, and gave it back to the borrower. Which would be consistent with Rish Lakish, there was Meshicha, which means ownership. Well, Yad Rikro, the answer is like this. If the Torah would have included to some Yad in that second Pasuk, then it wouldn't prove anything regarding our discussion. It wouldn't um, be used as a refutation or a support, meaning, Rashi explains, we, we can interpret the Pasuk in any which way we want. According to uh, Rabbi Echanan, we can say, well, uh, there was no Mashiach done, and the fact that there was a monetary, uh, you know, obligation, that in itself is enough to grant him rights 
to that item because Mois is kind of to Rishlach. We could say, no, there was Meshicha. I mean, there's no way to really pin us down in terms of what the Pasuk had in mind. But Hash, the Lord Yahad Rikro, but now the Torah purposely omitted one of these instances from the second Pasuk, which requires you to pay back, etc., and, and bring a carbon, it left out to Sumas Yod. There must be a reason. It's meant to indicate something. Misayeli. So, in fact, this supports Rish Lakish's position. The reason why the Torah omitted to Sumas Yod is because the Torah is indicating that unless there was Mashiach, there's no ownership. And that's what the case of the Sumas Yod is speaking of. There was no Mashiach. That's the right to Rish Lakish. No Mashiach, no ownership. Asks the Gemara, what do you mean there was no mission? With the Sumas Yod like Hadri Kra, there's no mentioning of, of the loan uh, denial in the second Pasuk. We have a Bryce, Amr Shimon. It is all included, it's a complete list. How do we know to add all those instances of denials mentioned earlier in Pasuk Hafala, which includes Tusumas Yad, i.e. denial of a loan? Lamata, how do we know to include it down below in the Pasuk of Gimel, which happens not to mention it, but it's really meant to be included. We have a very inclusive term, any type of monetary denial. So nothing's uh, omitted at all. It's a false, it's a mistaken premise. V'amar v'nachem, amar rabba, baravu, amar rabba, the rabba is to sumes yadei shavayin. Exactly this. The all-inclusive term is meant to cover loan denials as well. You have to return it, you have to bring the carbon. So what do you mean it's omitted? Behead yomele ad hadri kro. But you know what? It's not explicit in the Pasuk. It's alluded, but it's indicated, it's implied, but it's not explicit, it's not open. You have to return it with the chaymish and bring the carbon. And apparently the reason is because Torah is indicating that, yeah, um, in some cases, Tsumi Siyad does not fall into this category because there was no Mashiach done. No Mashiach, no ownership. So by the line, we have a Pasuk, which sources Rish Lakish's idea. And a Brisa as well, Masnisa, which is going to prove the same point. That unless you do Mashiach, you don't get ownership. Minola, Nisanya, Nasanala Balam. Here we're speaking about a fellow who was in possession of Hegdish funds. He gave it to the bathhouse attendant, which basically gives you, you know, the green light to use the bathhouse. You're sort of renting, uh, you know, usage rights, renting the property. Mal, you have committed me'ila because you have spent the money, even though you haven't yet used the bathhouse, but you have spent it because you have uh, gained rights to use the bathhouse. Vamar Avdafka Balan, Hudle Machasr Mashicha, that only applies to a bathhouse attendant where there's no physical possession. You're not can be taking anything physically. So it's not lacking Mashiach. So just paying for the service is considered spending the money. But if it involves acquiring an item or whatever that you're going to actually physically take into your possession, Mila has not yet been committed until you actually complete the process and do Mashiach. So this is a riot to Rosh Lakish. Only Mashiach completes the deal. Asks the Gemara about Tanya, we have a rice in the son of a sapper mall. If you gave this money to a, 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 a barber, that's considered money spent and you have done me'ila. The sapper haboy mimshach taspiris. By the barber, it's not about gaining rights to the bathhouse. You're actually asking for a service. And there, until you actually do mashicha on the taspiris, on the haircut machine, which is now committing the barber to give you the haircut, you haven't really initiated the process, you haven't concluded the process, you haven't really spent the money, you haven't concluded the deal. Hachab my skin was speaking Basapar Nachri, a non Jewish barber, Rashi says, uh the Laba Mashikahu, when Mashikha doesn't apply, Rashi says, because the Psukim about Mashikha clearly allude to a yid, it says Miyada Mitacha, which we learned yesterday, so all agree by a guy, Mashikha is not a requirement. Tani na mihachi. We'll find the same in a brice. Nasanala Sapur, Oil Sapun. He handed this money to a barber, a ship captain, Oil Khal Bali Umnus, any sort of craftsman. Mila has not been committed until you actually physically take possession of the item, of the equipment, which commits all parties to the deal. One minute, a minute ago we just said, by a barber, Mashiach is not required. Oh, apparently, here's a yid, here's a guy. Kashina, the two brises seem to collide. El Lav no, apparently we have to answer, Kam Basapar Nachri, if it's a goyish barber, Mashiach is not required. Kam Basapar Yisra, by yid it is, Shmamino. Okay, so now going back to the earlier Machlekes, 
Dinah Shlakish says Mashiach has required Minatira to acquire something, whereas Rabbi Yechon says Mois Koines Minatira. Mechain Amar Rav Nachman Dvar Torah Mois Koines Minatira. You get the item simply by paying for it. Ubotka Levi Masnisse Vashkech and Levi, who compiled the Teseftis, the Brises, included this in his Brise as well. And the son of Lasitain, Mo'al, Rashi explains that Sitain is a big we're, uh, wholesaler. So you have these retailers buying large quantities of uh, grain. So at first they give them a down payment, and then eventually, you know, as they sell out, they will um, keep on adding and you know and, until they get to the full, you know, uh, payout to the to the um, to the wholesale until they fin you know pay out all the balance. So basically, the the retailer is simply just giving a down payment, and if it's Hegdish money that he's using for this payment, Maal, he's committed Mila. How, how's that? And Rashi points out, even though he didn't do Mashiach on the grain, it's a huge amount. It's not, he's not doing Mashiach today. He's just giving him sort of a token amount, a down payment. We consider it as money spent. He has now diverted Hegdish money, he has done Mila. How's that? Apparently, because Minat Torah. You are kind of simply by paying. So it's considered money spent. Elokash l'rish lakish. So what does rish lakish do with this b'risa? Amalch rish lakish. How many Rab Shimon here? Even I agree that Rab Shimon, remember Rab Shimon in the Mishnah, he holds that Mois is kindness. That's the author of this b'risa. But the Rabbanon, they hold, Mashiach is required. Aval Amru, Mishapara. But even if it's not a complete deal, you're not meant to go back on your word. You're not meant to cancel a deal. Mishapara applies. Hashem who punish the people from the uh, marble, etc. He's going to hold this person accountable as well. Itmar, we have two ways to learn this phrase. Is it a direct curse, so to speak? Or perhaps not. Abaya Omar, I do a moidinale. Misha Par isn't really a direct curse. We're not really cursing him. We're just saying, look, beware. We're putting you on notice. Hashem who looked after them will look after you. You should know this is what's going to happen. We're just informing you. Giving you information. Rav Amar, no. It's a step further than that. It's more serious. Melat, Latinally, we actually give him a klola. This is a klola. Abayi Amar. We just inform him. Why? I meant to curse a yid. How can we apply a klola to a yid? Rav Amar, no problem. Melat, Latinally, we have no problem doing that in this case because he's not being honest. right? Remember that key word, amongst your community, a person who's behaving like a upstanding community member but this fellow is not Rashi says because he's not being honest and he is honest how do I know says Rabbi that it's actually meant as an act of curse what happened was he was selling salt so his customers gave him you know a down payment partial payment for the ship for the salt shipment Turned out, Lusayif, Yakir Melcha, salt went up. Also, came to Rabbi Yechon, so Rabbi Yechon, the seller came to Rabbi Yechon, could I uh, go back on the deal? And, you know, maybe uh, I hope that the, uh, maybe uh, in the hopes that the uh, customer will be Meichel me. Amrali says, no, 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 don't take chances. Zil Havlu, go deliver the salt, Viloy, otherwise, Kabul Olech Mishapara, you're submitting yourself to Mishapara. You're going to be cursed. Now, let's analyze the story. Vi Amris, Oidui Medinalei. Remember, there are two ways to learn Mishapara. Are we just informing you of what could happen, or is it actually an active curse? If it's just about informing, I mean, Rav Chibar Yehissa with Tamad Chacham, you don't need to be told these things. Rav Chibar Yehissa, Baruch, do you? Is this somebody that you have to inform these basic things? I mean, the Tamad Chacham. Obviously, it's more than that. It's an actual curse. Says the Gemara, Vela Mai. So what do you mean to say, Melech Latina labor cursing him? I mean, Rav Chibar Yehissa, Asil Kabul Latusa de Rabbanon? So how can you suggest that he came to... Uh, submit himself to a, a klala by the Chachamim. He knew what was coming, so why would he allow himself to do Ella says the Gemara is not such a simple case. It was more complicated than that. Ella Rav Chibar Yesef Irova in What happened was, it wasn't full payment. Uh, apparently the Gemara and the Havamina held that they gave him, they paid him a full, sorry, they paid him a full, but they hadn't yet done the Sheikh. But now the Gemara is going to turn around and say, look, it wasn't a Rav, and a Rav means a partial payment, a down payment. A Rav in they gave him five hundred dollars out of a thousand, right? So he wasn't sure. Is that really going to commit him to the deal? 
It's only partial payment. I mean, if he gets paid in full, okay, Misha Parah applies. But here, it's different. Who suffered? He thought, connect the Ukraine. $500? Okay, it affects $500 worth of salt, but not the rest. No. It commits you to the entire deal. Can you get Kula Ukraine? And therefore, you have to stick with it. As we learned in a, in a separate discussion, Itmar, a Ravain, right? A partial down payment. Rav Omar connect the Ukraine. It only affects as per the amount of money you gave. Rabbi Echnaur, can I get Kula Ukraine? Acquires the whole thing. May is comes a cash. Hanoisin, a Ravain Chavir. Rashi explains, although we're using similar terminology, a Ravain, as before, but here a Ravain means something entirely different. In the previous discussion, a Ravain meant a down payment. Right? Here, a Rav means a mashkain, uh, a collateral, to ensure that we stick to our, words, to, to our deal. Rav Omer connected, um, sorry, I'm not saying Rav the Chaveri. So basically, a fellow wants to buy, you know, a, a car. He says, look, sell me the car. Okay, how much? We made a deal. Fine. Shook hands. And here's an item of value to sort of solidify the deal, to ensure that we go through with the deal. Varmalani tells him like this, Imani Chayzer B, Ruvain the buyer, tells Shimon, if I cancel a deal, you can keep my item. And likewise, Shimon responds, I'm also committed to the deal. Imani Chayzer B, if I refuse to sell you the, uh, the car, right? Not only am I going to, I'm going to give you two computers back. This guy what tonight. Rabbi Yassi says, these words stand. Why? Because Rabbi Yassi Tamei, Rabbi Yassi has his shita, the Omar Asmach Takani, even like an exaggerated type of thing like this. It's called Asmach He promised him something, you know, outlandish to, you know, just to um, make him feel safe and secure. Yeah. It's committal. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it goes through. You have to stick to it. Rabbi Yassi Aymer, no. If the buyer cancels, he doesn't have to give him the computer. If the seller cancels, he doesn't own two computers. Rather, you know, because it was just, you know, verbal, you know, de- demagoguery. <laughs> At most, it commits the parties to the amount of, of value in that computer. So they have to keep the, the sale to the level, right, of the value of the computer. The car was worth 10000 the computer was worth 100 So $100 out of that sale has to be kept because that much they're committed to. The, the amount of, of, the, of the sale which reflects the, the mashkin, which is a very limited type of amount. When do we say it only affects that much value. When it was not meant as down payment, he just said, look, this Iravin, this Mashkin, is going to be kind. Which obviously doesn't work, right? It's not, a, it's not meant to be as payment for the rest. So, so we don't, uh, so, so it doesn't really take a full effect. But let's say he actually paid him. It wasn't just a Mashkin. He bought a house, he bought a field, right? Aval Machale buys a Soda Bell of Zeus for a thousand. And he paid him partially. He paid him for part of that amount. Uparla Mehem Chamesh Mehem Zeus. He paid him 500. So in this case, since it was meant as actual payment, it, was just, it wasn't just like a guarantor, it was a, was a mashkin, it was a, a binding type of run. It was an actual payment. I feel like in this case he, he has now acquired the entire field. Even though he only paid him for half. It's Kenyan Kesav. He kind of everything. The rest? He'll pay him the rest later. The rest will pay him. I feel like even if it takes a couple of years. Now, this last scenario presented by Rabbi Hashem Lil is identical to the previous 
a Robin we had before with Rav and Rabbi Yechanan, the story with the salt, right? It was, it was meant as partial payment for the purchase. It wasn't just a mashkin, it was, right? And, and what did Rav tell us earlier? That, uh, no, you're only kind of connected the mashkin, connected the Robin. You, you only, it's considered payment only in as much as only, it only, it only affects, it's only kind to you. It only allows you to acquire an amount corresponding to the value of the, of the down payment. That's Rav's opinion. Rav Yechanan says, no, you acquire everything. And here we have a Tana. Rav Mashiach and Gamliel who says, like Rav Yechanan. Oh, let's just conclude the kasha. My last, the more is assuming at this point, who had in the metatal and the stomach and coming luluku. That we pretty much compare these two things. Basically, just as, just as we speak about partial payment for a field or a house. Now a house, which is karka, is acquired through through kesef. Right? You don't need mashiach. Mashiach is only metatal. So by paying for a house or a field, you, you are coming to the house. And we learned that even partial payment gets you the whole house. You have to you know, pay the balance, but in terms of ownership, you have now acquired the whole house. We're assuming, in similar fashion, but when purchasing metatalin. So, when you pay for metatalin, even though it's not a finished deal, it's not a done deal, it's not a completed process until you do meshicha. Metatalin requires meshicha, right? But at least with respect to obligating the parties to stick with their words, to stick with the deal. Lest they become susceptible to the Misha Para, right? So with reference to that, we assume it works the same way. Partial payment commits the entire deal. Even partial payment is assumed to affect the entire uh, amount. And there's mishapara on everything. Law says the Gemara, no, not necessarily. Who says it's a proper, you know, connection, a proper comparison? Metatlin bedestomalei kani. Partial payment is not assumed to get you the whole metatlin with respect to exposing the, uh, the, the canceller, the canceling party to mishapara, no. He's only committed to an amount corresponding to the down payment. What's the difference? Well, Maishna answers like this. By real estate, by karka, where kesef actually completes the entire process. You pay, it's yours. So even partial payment gets you the entire thing. But metatali, by items. The lay you can't, you can't really acquire just by paying, right? It's only with respect. It, it, uh, it makes a commitment. It's a mishapara consequence, right? But it's not really yours. So here we can fully understand that if it was just partial payment, you know what? You're only willing to pay part of it, so he's not, he's not obligated to give you the entire thing. Even with respect to Mishapara. No. Here it's a matter of commitment. You're, you're showing you're serious. Look, I'm actually paying for it. I mean, you gotta, you can just back out. Yeah, but how much do you pay? For part of it? Okay. I'm committed as much as you're committed. Like Connor, like the kool So it doesn't affect the entire item, only with respect to uh, an amount corresponding to this down payment. Lema Katana. So perhaps this whole discussion is really a machlekes tanai. How far does, you know, a down payment go? Is a person now committed to the entire thing, or it's only part of it? Basically, this machlekes Rav and Rabbi Yechon, regarding buying metatlan through a down payment. Does it affect the entire stock or only the amount corresponding to the down payment? Let me get tanai. Hamavas chaver lamashkin. Person lends his friend money in exchange for a collateral. Even though the mashkin is only worth half the loan, he lent him a thousand that the mashkin is worth five hundred. Shmita doesn't affect the loan. Typically, shmita 
you know, makes the loan uh, expire. But here not, because when you have a mashkin, you're in possession of the loan. You're not chasing the borrower. It's not, uh, it's not a matter of going and collecting it. And the Pasuk says, don't collect, don't run after him. He's not running after him. He already has it in his possession. So there's no shmita there. So even though the mashkin only reflects part of the loan, but it's as though he's in possession of the entire loan. And he can collect it. Rabbi no. Only as per the mashkin's value. If the mashkin that he has in his possession equals the entire amount of the entire loan, fine. If he's in possession Otherwise, he loses the loan. Now, what does this mean? When the first sheet says that the Shemitah doesn't affect the loan, what do you mean? It doesn't affect the amount of the loan which corresponds to the Mashkin. Well, obviously, you mean the opposing view. Rabbi Danasi disagrees. We'll hold that the Mava will lose access to even $500 of the loan because of Shemitah. No, that can't be. Because in his possession, he has a mashkin worth 500. He's already in possession. He doesn't have to collect it. Elo mashkin, the knock it Why is he holding a mashkin? His possession, his ownership, his holding the mashkin certainly, certainly gives him that right to collect 500. Elo lav shemam. You know, apparently the discussion is on the rest. The first 500 is a given that he gets. The question is on the rest. My enim is shamit to kamar. Rabbi Shem Gamliel, when he said enim is shamit, he means the entire thing. Shemitah doesn't affect the entire loan. Because part of it is an emashkin. And that sort of gives him hold of the entire thing. So even though it's only a partial sort of pay down, you know, a down payment, it's as though he's in possession of the entire thing. Whereas Rebidah, when he said Shemitah does affect it, it means the other half. The part on which he doesn't have a mashkin. And Bakim Mephlegit Machlekes revolves around our question. Down payment affects the entire thing or not? He's in possession of the entire thing. Like we said before, when you do a partial payment, your commitment covers everything. Partial payment is partial acquisition. That's it. So perhaps this discussion is really machlekes tanaim. No, no, not necessarily. My enim shamit to come from When he said shmita doesn't affect, he didn't mean everything. He meant this portion. Lach palgad nakli mashkin. The five hundred dollars on which the mashkin is situated, that he has, but not the rest. Mechlad the bidah nasi sabar. So the other shita holds that he loses everything. Lach palgad nakli mashkin. I'm shamit shmita will unravel even the. That portion of the loan on which he has a mashkin. What do you mean? He has the mashkin in his hands. A mashkin did not get lamely. Why is he holding a mashkin if not to be considered in possession? Or at least that part of the loan. No, lezichra and dvarim ba'alma. Perhaps that doesn't give him sort of possession of the of the, even the five hundred dollars. It's just lezichra and dvarim ba'alma, so that the uh, the mava is holding the mashkin so that the lender remembers. Basically, he's using, he's using it to he's going to use it to black to 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 to, to pressure. To sort of remind, gently remind the lawyer, look, you know, I have your car, by the way, you know, it's, uh, but he's not called a muhsak, he's not called in possession of the loan, in which case, Shemitah comes around, there's no loan. Okay, we learned about uh, Rabbi Yechon and Rishlagash again, Rabbi Yechon says, Mois is kainais, mit Rabban and Mashiach is required. Rish Lagash says, no, in Atoyer Mashiach is required, we have a Brisa and a, and a Pasuk as a riot to Rish Lagash. We discussed Mishapara and how it works, and regarding a, a partial down payment, whether or not it affects the entire amount, Rabbi Yechon says it does, as per the story with Rochir Yasef and the salt. All the best to you, and Atalach Rabbah.